Tonight's keynote speaker, we have a wonderful evening ahead of us, continuing with a newer tradition, now in its fifth year, of having a student as the keynote speaker. We conducted a nationwide search and screened a large number of highly qualified students, 110 to be exact, out of over 7,000 that initially submitted applications, the highest we've ever seen in the 60 years of the club's existence. These folks are ranging in age from high school seniors to graduate students, and all with the intent to pursue a career in the science, technology, engineering, or mathematics fields. After an intensive search, we are pleased to have with us this evening Mr. Evan Pico. Evan is a junior at the University of Maryland College Park studying aerospace engineering. <laughs> bring it up, bring it up. And is on target to finish his degree in the space systems track of the university's aerospace program. His impressive list of honors and accomplishments include being named a National Merit Scholar and receiving the school's prestigious Banneker Key Scholarship. He has also had the opportunity to serve as an undergraduate teaching fellow. Mr. Pico has served in numerous student leadership positions, including fundraising chair for the Theta Tau Professional Engineering Fraternity and the treasurer of the Professional Greek Council. He was also instrumental in developing a fundraising strategy for the school's rocketry club that enabled 90 students to become certified rocketeers. In addition to all of his activities, Mr. Pico is involved in various research projects, including contributing to a NASA-funded project to develop a universal magnetorheological gripper that can be mounted onto a CubeSat to allow it to perch on satellites and vehicles in space. Mr. Pico hopes to take his impressive list of achievements and apply them one day towards advancing the world's manned spaceflight capabilities, particularly to Mars or back to the moon. In addition to serving as tonight's keynote speaker, the Space Club and Foundation is providing Evan with a $10,000 scholarship to support his academic pursuits. And in just a few seconds, you'll be hearing from Evan about his aspirations. Please help me welcome tonight's keynote speaker, Mr. Evan Pico. On December 14th, 1972, as the Watergate scandal was slowly developing, as Elton John's new hit single, Rocket Man, graced the airwaves, as Willy Brandt was re-elected chancellor of West Germany, Eugene Cernan became the final human to set foot on the moon. During his final moments on the lunar surface, he said, we leave as we came, and God willing, as we shall return, with peace and hope for all mankind. A complex series of calculated maneuvers led him to those regrettably unfulfilled words. The descent to the surface, the transfer to lunar orbit, the launch from Cape Canaveral, with each step of the journey supported by a talented team of scientists and engineers. Long before he ever saw the launch pad, the combined experience he gains from his educators, friends, and family put him on a path to be one of the few humans to walk on the moon. But what pushed him to take the final step into the capsule with the knowledge that he may never return? What inspires us to rise up to these immense challenges and explore space? I recently found myself consumed by this overwhelming question, so to gain some clarity, I went running. My favorite route is the nine mile stretch between my apartment at the University of Maryland and the National Air and Space Museum on the Mall here in DC. It reminds me of the best aspects of any initiative from the city and that it's needlessly long and utterly exhausting. <laughs> After a few miles, you can really begin to feel the physical toll the run takes on you. Each new step becomes punishingly heavier than the last. Each new breath drawn with increasing desperation. Here's what I love most about this route, though. The moment when I begin to falter and every bone in my body is begging me to give up, that's when I can start to make out the top of the Capitol Dome 
rising above the rooftops. Suddenly, my goal doesn't seem so far off after all. It's right there, staring me in the face, daring me to overcome my weaknesses and push through the last few miles. And so I keep moving forward. When I reach the Smithsonian, I'm reminded of how those pioneers that populated the museum's halls must have similarly struggled. John Glenn, Gene Cernan, Alan Shepard, all the scientists and engineers at NASA, they all worked towards impossible goals. At any point, they could have given up and declared the challenges of spaceflight too difficult. But amazingly, they didn't. And they kept moving forward. I was born into a world that they created, where flying from coast to coast in under six hours is simple, even mundane. Where people frequently get sent into orbit, where landing on the moon is something that's been done before. Growing up with so many amazing achievements already said and done, you can't help but ask, what's next? And so when I was a young kid, way back in 2007, So when I was a young kid, my parents, who are in the audience tonight, <laughs> they gave me my all-time favorite Christmas present, a telescope. Immediately, I took it outside and pointed it at the moon. For the very first time, I saw the craters, Maria, and mountains in stunning detail. But what struck me most were the shadows. These Patches of inky black cast on the pale surface gave it a mesmerizing texture, a depth which was never apparent to the naked eye. Eager for more, I set my sight on Jupiter. And though I'd seen the gas giant up close in countless books and documentaries before, none of that compared to what I could see with my own eyes. This bronze orb hanging in the void, accompanied by its own small universe of gleaming satellites. Before that Christmas, my whole world consisted of what I could see before me. Mars wasn't so much a place, rather a background detail, like a snippet of unimportant news half listened to during your morning commute. Now when I look up at the night sky, it's as though each of those distant stars seem tangible, almost reachable. I found that there exists entire worlds, each as diverse and beautiful as our own, waiting patiently just beyond our reach for us to develop the know-how and the courage to venture out and explore them. Unsatisfied with the fact that we've left so much unexplored, I set about the task of building a vehicle that could take me to the moon, to Jupiter, and beyond. I started small, launching carefully assembled model rockets thousands of feet into the air, and after tasting success, I couldn't help but think, this is easy. <laughs> All you have to do is make the rocket bigger and you can go anywhere. <laughs> well, as I would soon find out, it's a task much easier said than done. So what then do you need to build a proper spaceship? Well, first, you need to master the basics. Algebra, geometry, basic chemistry, and classical physics. And trigonometry, and calculus, and electromagnetism, and thermodynamics. And differential equations, and special relativity, and aerodynamics, and orbital mechanics. It's a daunting list. One which promises numerous hours in cramped lecture halls, quite a few sleepless nights, and a frightening barrage of stressful exams. From high school through college, it gets progressively more difficult to stay afloat. But after every late night in the library, I could still look up, and I could see the moon, and I could see Mars, and I could see Jupiter, and I kept moving forward. Amidst all this stress, I gradually learned to lean on others for support, and they leaned on me in turn. For a number of years, my friends and classmates have helped each other through endless homework assignments, essays on geopolitics, programming projects, and the occasional existential crisis. Through every struggle, we grew a bit stronger, and I found myself a step closer to my goal. And we kept moving forward. As a result, I grew to realize an important fact. Leaving our planet is a task insurmountable by a single person and it will require tremendous effort and coordination from individuals across the globe to make concrete progress. It is because of this that space remains the greatest unifying force known to humanity. 
The history of our space program tells us as much, despite its beginnings as a tool for war. The Apollo program brought thousands of talented citizens together. The recent U.S.-Russian Soyuz partnership has brought two longtime bitter enemies together, and the International Space Station brought the entire world together. With our sights set on Mars, it is more apparent than ever that space demands our collective knowledge and abilities for us to even begin to explore it. The difficulties in getting to Mars are so great as to make the moon landings look simple, even mundane. It's easy for us to give up and return to living with our eyes fixed firmly to the ground beneath us. But that's not the world I want to live in. And if the amazingly talented people I've known at the University of Maryland are anything to go by, I'm convinced my generation will continue to push the boundaries of what we consider possible and be the first humans to set foot on Mars. From all these experiences in my relatively brief life, I've learned this. Space forces us to imagine who we could be, should we simply choose to overcome the weaknesses that limit and divide us. It challenges us to seek cooperation instead of isolation, to foster knowledge instead of ignorance, and to embrace creativity instead of complacency. That is why space inspires me. It's the reason why I'm becoming an aerospace engineer, because I'm not content with the idea that we're simply destined to travel the stars someday. As Ralph Waldo Emerson put it, the only person you're destined to become is the person you decide to be. And though exploring space is expensive, dangerous, and tremendously difficult, I am confident we will make the right decision. As long as we still look up and see the future that lies before us, we will keep moving forward. Thank you. Thank you, Evan. That was fantastic. It's inspiring to witness the enthusiasm you bring to your endeavors, for sure. You do have a very bright future.